Hello, hello. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Luca. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's, you know, these weeks are so fast. They happen so fast. And this is not just great because it's Friday and there's a weekend and we have time to uh, recharge, but also because next week uh, it's a PyTorch conference week. And unfortunately, you won't be able to be there for accidentals. You were supposed to be there, but you, you won't be able to. Uh, and that's a bummer, but I will go. So I'm happy for that part. <laughs> and um, it's actually great because we'll have a lightning talk on Thunder. Uh, lightning talk on lightning thunder um, and um, uh, um, it will be interesting to meet a lot of people we'll have a booth and uh, and then there will be a keynote so uh, very much looking forward to uh, meeting the community yeah 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 so the other part is that last week we promised we would uh, see Liger kernels integrated but then we were talking about it and we said, hey, wait a minute. We never quite went through uh, computing backward of anything in, in Thunder. And so like our viewers don't actually know how the mechanisms are. And so they, like nobody will really understand what it takes to integrate the Liger kernel. So we thought we'll push the Liger kernel stuff one week uh, and bump it one week uh, uh, in the future. And uh, and then go through the basics and the, how the sausage is made uh, when it comes to yes, computing forward, but then also computing backward. Um, so I will share my screen um, and we'll do a little drawing really quickly to understand you know what we'll do, and then we can get into the code and. Um, that will be the majority of the time we spend uh, this week. So, backward. So, um, we'll go back to the examples and here I have all the past stuff. So that, that's also nice, which makes uh, it clear what we will deal with. So, um, the first uh, week after the summer, what we did is basically we went through uh, the first uh, example of uh, and a very simple MLP uh, that has linear, ReLU, and then linear again. And then we stuck in a matrix multiplication, a custom, well, we traced it, we obtained the trace, and then we said, okay, we have a, cust a custom trident kernel, and instead of monkey patching or adding um, uh, something to the, the model itself, we took the trace and transformed it so that, um, or we associated a custom executor to um, uh, uh, to run our trace, and so uh, we had our trunching kernel here um, that was executing linear, and then uh, we coded it up um, top to bottom. But what we did then last week was okay. Let's try to um, fuse these two things together and write the Triton kernel for that, which was just one line <laughs> in addition to the previous Triton kernel, uh, because really is, is a, basically a, a very simple function. Just go back and, and watch that. And then we wrote a transform that took two entries in the trace, which were actually this one, for example, Mat Mat Matmol and the following one and defined a new, um, uh, a new op, a new symbol in the trace that stand it for uh, that stood sorry stand, stood for the the new fused operation. Now uh, we want to get back to this MLP and say okay, but usually what you need to do when you have a model, like let's say you have an MLP, so here and then you compute your um, the output. Yeah, you enter with a tensor. You have a matrix. You do the matrix multiply. Let's assume no bias. Uh, you will obtain another vector and then you have a, a non-linearity here and then you have activations and then another matmol and this is our uh, small MLP. So, but what you need to do usually in this case is not just go forward because the moment you initialize it, all these parameters here, they will be uh, randomly initialized if you initialize them that way. 
um, ReLU or the nonlinearity usually doesn't have parameters that it, it needs to learn, but these are the weights, right? And the weights here need to be learned. In order to learn the weight, then uh, what do you do? Well, you, you usually define a loss function uh, and the loss function is something that says, okay, if I need to classify cats and dogs, it will tell me how accurate I am in, in, in my task in a quantitative way. Uh, and so then it will, um, uh, uh, I will want to say, say the loss is L. Um, I will want to propagate this error back and say, how do I compute an update to this weights, um, uh, a delta weight that I can apply to my weights uh, to then, you know, re retry another time on the forward, recompute the error and go back. And this loop is called backprop. Um, right. Well, so this is forward. Taking the gradient, right? Taking the gradient. You take, well, what you need to do to do that, how do you compute this, is you compute the loss and you take the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to, uh, to your weights. Uh, and so it says, if I change my weight by a, a very tiny amount, increasing them, how does the loss change? Does it increase or does it decrease? And then if it decreases, I, you know, if I find out the direction by which I need to kind of turn the little knob on each weight so that it goes in the direction of decreasing, I say, great. And then I will kind of derive from there and there are more sophisticated ways of doing that, but not so much, it's not so, so more sophisticated to yeah, then sure. apply a change to the weight so that the loss will be lower, hopefully, afterwards. This is like the, the big picture. And then you can compute this gradient using something called backprop, backpropagation, uh, which is kind of applying the chain rule. Uh, so instead of computing L with respect to W, you take L derivative of L with respect to whatever stands between my weight and all the, all the things I computed to get to the loss. And so I need to have a, a chain of operations and I can then uh, compute all the partial derivatives of this uh, with respect to that until here. And so I can then compute my, my, my gradient and then I apply a tiny bit of the gradient multiplied by the learning rate, for example, to my weights. Okay, this okay. is all well and good. Subtract. Yeah, go ahead. You subtract. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. You, of course, you subtract that amount because you want to go in the, you know, you, you want to minimize your loss and not maximize it. Um, but PyTorch, right? PyTorch has a thing called Autograd where it automatically tracks um, things as you do the forward computation. Uh, it keeps track of what computed what. And so when you call um, something dot backward, uh, it will uh, compute, then recompute uh, using uh, the expression for these uh, derivatives of this function you use to get from a term, uh, a certain point to the loss. And, and then it will populate all the gradients. And so if you then go to w dot grad, um, uh, if you have a parameter that uh, requires grad, then after you call backward, you, you will see this property of W, which is a parameter populated with the gradient after you call it. Yeah. But how do you do it? Do we do it in Thunder, right? Because in Thunder, what we do is we turn this into a trace, right? And that's one, once we have the trace, then how do we go from here? What do we do to get the gradient of what the trace computed and um, do we use PyTorch do we don't use PyTorch do we ship an actual auto differentiation engine within Thunder that's yeah. what we're gonna find out today <laughs> yeah so in a way we do and basically once you have I mean PyTorch does it by remembering all the things that we computed um, and uh, if you want to have a very gentle introduction to that and see what PyTorch does, you might also look at our book. Um, <laughs> but so when we have this source code and it's a particularly simple source code that doesn't have any control flow, uh, then you can just go 
like backwards on the th source code and you can uh, compute the derivative of each element and in the total this will compute the uh, derivative for everything the only thing you have to like you have to remember some of the some of the values you need for computing this right and yep. uh, thunder will actually it will do all that it will construct uh, first a combined forward backward and then it will uh, uh, split those two apart in order to be able to hook into PyTorch Autograd and still have the computation work. Right, because we what we are expecting when we torch, uh, sorry, when we thunder jit something, is that then when we run the model, like we say, uh, I don't know, x equals or sorry, um, loss. It equals model x oh sorry x and model has been thunder jitted previously right then we yeah. want to be able to call loss dot backward right yep and this is something that is executed initially executed by initiated by uh by pytorch because this is a uh, something that we understand, but then since the computation itself, the forward computation, it's actually um, uh, the execution of a trace. Then what we have the opportunity to do is to obtain the trace of backward again, and this comes with a lot of advantages um, because we can do the custom kernel again, the transformations, the distributed stuff that we'll see in the future, and so on. And you anyway. can look at it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And you can look at it. So let's start then from a simple MLP, as we, we said, and then let's just look at this backward, how it looks like. And then we go from there. I'll pass you the, uh, the screen. Okay, so uh, let's start the studio. And I made a copy of the exact notebook we had last week. And I have to add one version of these with a bit more commentary to the to the uh, 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 Thunder repository, and I'll share it next time. But so uh, this still also has our running. Remember, right at the end, we uh, uh, reran the cell, so uh, yep. that maybe clear clear everything. Um, and then the thing we don't want this time, we use this as simplification that we have the uh, uh, requires grad fault. And so if we delete this, and also we wanted a simple MLP, so we'll delete all the extra layers we inserted just because we could. Uh, so this will be our two layer MLP and a bit of sample input. And then, of course, uh, uh, we had our kernel and our driver function if we want, uh, uh, and all that was very nice. And then we had our own operator executor here for both the mutmol and the linear with the rebel fuse. Um, and then for the mutmol, we also had this uh, register implementation that we registered the mutmol as a implementation of the linear transform uh, uh, in case there is no bias and so we will be using that uh, we don't need the transform today so we'll skip that um, and then we can uh, skip it here too and uh, we have our own executor in here and we can watch the trace right but yep. so Here's the trace, and it's a bit different than the one last time. And the main difference here is the return values, because actually uh, uh, it will return the output, which is like the thing we computed on the forward that will be the result of the computation. Um, but here it also saved a few tensors, the input, uh, two intermediate results, before and after relo, I guess. Um, and uh, the weight, uh, which are the bits or the boolean mask and the relo, 
uh, result and uh, uh, the weight and all of these uh, are saved for the backward. Yeah, see, we, we see augmented forward and is that what you mean by, um, by a right. bit different, right? Right. So it's augmented in what sense? Like it's augmented because um, it's augmented because we also save something. Right. And maybe we even compute a slightly different thing. We will see all about how this works Perfect. Uh, in a bit. Yeah. Uh, we can check that it's the same. It is of course the same, except that now we have a backward. Um, and then there is uh, also the backward trace. We didn't call the backward yet, but Thunder has already computed the backward trace, so we can look at that. Similar to last traces, there is last backward traces. And we call this with our uh, jitted model, and we just take the last one for simplicity here. And we see <laughs> that, well, it has <laughs> fancy words in it. So we have the saved for backwards, which is uh, uh, what uh, we had just a bit ago. And then- So all the uh, extra saved for backward means all the extra returns from the previous forward trace, right? right? Yeah. And then we have the code tangents, which is fancy words for the gradient of the output. <laughs> um, and so actually this is uh, one. And then it has computed the backward. There's a bit of uh, transposing and stuff going on. Um, but uh, essentially there's uh, mud molds. And so we want to compute the backward in, at any step. We want to compute the backward with the two inputs to the mud molds. And both of these will be mud molds again, right? With uh, uh, various inputs. Yeah, so it's interesting, right? Because all these things were auto computed automatically because we have an automated differentiation kind of mini uh, framework inside Thunder. So every operator, uh, as we saw at the beginning, every operator will have its own decomposition. And on top of that, it will also have its gradient computed uh, somehow. And then one interesting thing, I think, to just mention here is that of course, since Thunder is so extensible and we, 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 try, we try to make it as extensible as possible, you can also, but I think also PyTorch has uh, similar things, similar machinery. Um, you can register a backward implementation uh, for, for a certain operation. So the same yeah. thing, the same way we, you can register an executor for an operation, you can also register your own backward implementation because maybe you want a different one or one that is more numerically stable, whatever. Yeah, so one thing you don't see here actually is uh, we don't see our custom optimized mud mold, right? And yeah, so, uh, uh, indeed. <laughs> and so this has a reason. If we re enable the fusion for just a moment here, uh, we can see why, because now if we run this, uh, Thunder has actually replaced in the transform and has replaced the linear with my linear. And mm -hmm. now it notices that VJP, which is the fancy word for backward. Yeah, we need to, we need to get rid of these fancy words because <laughs> it's fancy and it feels us, you know, makes, makes us feel smarter, but it's not helpful. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm a mathematician, but to my mind, you don't need to have it. I'm not a mathematician, and I, I feel a lot smarter when I can say this thing, like vector, Jacobian, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But yeah. But, yeah. but so yeah. what it says here, it's the gradient, the backward of my linear relo hasn't been implemented. And it's yep. fair to say this. And so here, because the transform replaced it unconditionally without checking whether we would need a gradient that we don't have, mm -hmm. we run into trouble. And when we have this register implementation mechanism here, we actually, Thunder will detect that it doesn't have a linear and it will try to save the day by just not applying the transform, just as uh, it doesn't apply the transform uh, when the checker returns false. Mm -hmm. and, uh, maybe, you know, maybe this is something that we could maybe just 
say, hey, you maybe forgot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. It's always a bit tricky to I know, give I know. feedback to the user without failing completely because right once the user intentionally does something and you say maybe that's not what you yeah. want there will be a lot of noise <laughs> yeah. but so one of the obvious things we can do if we want to have our own custom mud mold in here is we tell thunder well yeah if you have this with a gradient and need a gradient for it later then uh here's how to compute it so okay we'll great so let's enable this Let's yeah. See. So we do this by providing a, a gradient transform. So uh, along with the other ones. So this will be my linear gradient transform. And now we will really see what what uh, Lucas uh, like matrix calculus <laughs> is up to. <laughs> Oh, uh, transform. No, I, I won't know the second, but I will know this one. You're missing an S in uh, transform. That's my contribution oh, yeah. to, the th <laughs> okay. to the computation. Uh, right. The rest of the function is trivial and it's left as an exercise. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, that's what the mathematicians uh, always try to get by with. But so the first <laughs> order of business will be to compute the result, right? Yeah. Why do we have to compute the result here? Uh, because sometimes you need to have, and this was what Luca hinted at when he said this is the augmented forward. Sometimes you want to like have additional things you keep for the backward, and then uh, uh, you would uh, have a different operation here that also computes that. And so uh, this is where we have to do this. And at the very end, we will uh, return the result. But now we have to tell Thunder like how to do the gradient. <laughs> and uh, if you know PyTorch, you have the forward and the backward function. And basically what it does is there's a magic connection between the outputs, the inputs and the outputs of the forward and the inputs and outputs of the backward. Um, at, with Thunder, we decided to try something different. And so what we did is we let you get the gradient of the result. So let's call it grad res. And this will be thunder, uh, thunder core transforms get grad. And uh, it should be the gradient of res, right? And so we yep. link this to the gradient. Um, we're coming from we're coming from the right in the diagram, right? So yeah, um, we so have we the, need to go backwards, so we need to start from the result and get its gradient, and then we can add to it, right? Right. And so this is like integrating the forward and the backward here because we think it's neat to have it all in one place. And so with the gradient of the result, we can compute the we need to compute the gradient of the input. Mm -hmm. and the gradient of the weight, right? Yep. So this will be the task. And then, uh, of course, we need to tell Thunder like w which gradients we have computed. And if there was a get grad, maybe there is something that uh, also uh, uh, lets us give the grads back. So this is put grad, or we have one version that does two of them at time or even more. Yep. So for int and weight, the gradients will be grad in and grad weight. So this is all the thunder you need. And now comes the complicated part. <laughs> and the complicated part is uh, to compute the input. And I always have to like remember it by thinking about the shapes. So uh, uh, the input will have, and the gradient of the input needs to have the same shape as uh, the output does. And so this is probably kind of the, the rule of thumb that you need uh, because then, and it needs to have the gradient of the result and the other thing. So we need to have the gradient of the result and the weight in here. So the only thing that has the batch dimension as the first dimension, and I will call my mutmol here, 
the only thing that has the uh, uh, right first dimension will be grad imp. And now I just have to remember, do I need to put weight or weight transposed here? <laughs> and so actually, so grad imp will have the like <laughs> output feature size and the weight will have the output feature size as the first dimension. That's why we needed the transpose here. And so this is the right formula. Yep. And for the weight, we can do the same exercise. So the weight will have as the first dimension, the, uh, uh, the output feature size. And so the way to get this from grad imp is to transpose it. And then we need to multiply into it. But so this will have the inner dimension, the right dimension will be the uh, uh, batch size. And so we just uh, need to multiply into it. And so this is how I remember how the mod model. <laughs> Thanks for the started. tricks. <laughs> and uh, 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 I, I can never remember the thing by learning it. Okay, so, uh, and now the grad transform is uh, my linear gradient transform. And so with this bit of magic, uh, we can just do this again. And uh, amazingly, we hit some error because I screwed up some, some <laughs> of the formula probably. Local variable oh, grad imp. Grad imp is referred to before assignment. And this is uh, because I screwed it up. I was so focused on doing this. Uh, this should yeah, be yeah, it's a rise, of course. Yeah. And this should be grad rest too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good Sorry, chat I didn't catch it. So. Formula happily in software, it will be caught, right? Um, <laughs> and so this computed the right thing. I managed to like not use this very well. And if we look at the last traces, all right, there's our my mud mole again. And other than that, nothing changed. And it's not a surprise that nothing changed here. And we can see it computes the right thing. I should show you that it also computes the right backward, right? So uh, uh, we can do geo is uh, to which, uh, run like uh, I mean, so let's just get the right sized output gradient. And then we can do uh, grad I don't know, maybe weight one, weight zero is uh, port autograd grad and uh, of uh, the output. Uh, so m uh, imp, let's do the reference first with respect to uh, uh, m. But Oh, m0 dot wait. And uh, uh, we want to we want to have the cut out here. Does that work? Tempting to use kublas, but there was no current CUDA context. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, That's weird. Whatever yeah. this means. Do I get, uh, I do get the yeah. grid. So yeah, uh, the grid weight zero, and this could be the reference. And our grid weight zero is the same thing, uh, except for two details. Oh, I can. So the proper way here would be to jm get parameter, but I think you can also just run this, this way. Uh, and now the question is, are they similar? Uh, so, uh, so just for context here, we're comparing the grad computed through PyTorch Autograd versus uh, the grad computed through our um, new trace. Oh, and these are one element, two bolts. So yep. uh, and they're the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, did it, how did it compute this? 
uh, uh, here the backward trace now has all the calls to my mud mall again. Uh, and actually it has a little bit less of permutations. <laughs> yeah, compared to before, <laughs> yes. We don't mind, right? And yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, so just, just to clarify, we will be using the Trident kernel in the backward at this point, right? Yeah, and so my mud mall will map to the Triton kernel. Yep. And so this is how you how you can can do the backward transform. And of course, if I wanted to, I could also register an implementation for the uh, uh, fused Rello backward, and then yep. uh, uh, and then uh, have a gradient computed for that. Uh, the thing is that kind of the fused backward uh, will be non. It will not be a fused. Or the backward for the fused linear relo will not be a fused kernel mm -hmm. naturally, because we need the yeah we need the uh, uh, whether the uh, output was greater than zero, and yeah. so we don't want to fuse that because uh, each element of the backward of the input matrices for the matrix multiplication is read several times, and so that would not be efficient to fuse. Yeah, but that, that's another thing we can we can touch upon in the future probably. Uh, you got you know I'm just replaying what you just said. Since Relu is zero uh, for uh, the argument being uh, lower than zero, that is kind of a stopgap for a gradient, right? So uh, the thing will will uh, behave very differently whether the result was actually greater than zero or not. And so. I mean, we could yeah, we could write a backward for the fuse relo if we want to. I mean, right. Uh, I mean, you... it's not it's man not mandatory, but you know, if you want to venture there, uh, you know, the more the better. It's fine. Well, but, um, you decide. Or we could just say, well, we can do a short episode today. No, no, it's fine. Go for it. Like I'm super happy to see that happening. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see. We have the my linear relo. And I'm not sure that I can actually register an implementation without a transform, but we can try it, right? So, yeah, so we, now we go into you know, unrehearsed uh, territory, which is great. You know, we get into live coding more and then at some point we'll live code thunder and that's it. Yeah. So what we're doing right now is like, since we fused Matmol and Relu in the last episode, what happens if I want to try to kind of make the backward more efficient by having a hand fuse kernel uh, for that same situation? Um, right. Because in the end, like yeah, uh, to us everything is a is a trace, and and so we can reason about what to fuse and what not to fuse. One of the nice thing about what we just did is that you can actually look at the at the backward. You can look at the primitive decomposition, you can see whether an executor like MBFuser uh, fused anything in the backward and so on. So you have a lot of visibility there. And so I'll uh, cheat a bit by uh, just having this. And now the thing we need to do is we need to manipulate grudpress here. So grudpress is uh, uh, thunder torch where I think I need to use the uh, uh, thunder torch here uh, because it's past the translation from torch to thunder um, but now uh, what we need is where res is uh, greater mm -hmm. than zero we take uh, grad res and uh, for the other parts we take uh, uh, zero and, uh, yep. if that works it should already do the trick except that i need to return the result because otherwise i will get the weirdest error message and, uh, <laughs> and it will not be pretty um now i need to i need to uh, uh, also register the implementation here and so uh, this is uh an implementation for my linear uh, mm -hmm. 
my linear rebel. Uh, so I need to put the symbol there I'm implementing. The execution, I can just put the symbol again, I think, uh, because it's like a not changing. And I can delete this, I think, and it defaults to uh, always use it. Um, and so this will be my linear relu rot transform. And so with any bit of luck, this should give us uh, the unrehearsed <laughs> uh, completely live. <laughs> I don't know. Why do I do that? Probably because the... Uh, yeah, no. Haha! It's an error. Uh, and the backtrace is elaborate. Shapes were expected to be the same. <laughs> oh, that's the worst possible error you can get. Well, it's... Uh, uh... So I guess that is the risk of doing it live. I don't think I can. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. But actually, this is very encouraging for everyone, right? If Thomas Beeman cannot like just do it live, then there's there's hope for everyone, and this is how we get to our thing, <laughs> you know, very iteratively. Which makes a point, like. The more, the thinner the stack, the, the more visibility you have on the computation, on the shapes and so on, while you code these things up, the better it is. This makes a point for having something that talks to you and you can work with. So next time, so right now we explored how you, uh, you get to do a backward. We understood that there's a whole uh, auto differentiation framework. It integrates with PyTorch Autograd. And then you can reason about the backward trace. Now we will understand the next time uh, how you know Liger. We uh, we chose Liger as the set of um, Triton kernels that are optimized for LLMs training. Uh, so they're not necessarily optimized for inference, but they're optimized for training. And so we really need to understand. When you look at the Liger kernels, you will have a path for forward and a path for backward. And now we will know how to position them with the added benefit that they already did the work that we were kind of trying to do live. <laughs> so, <laughs> but next time we will do the right thing and uh, present you the, the solution of the riddle. Hey, Tom, it's not even what Friday happens? yet, and we're here. Again. It's Monday. Yeah, what happened? So, actually, if you have been following, on Friday, we got a bit adventurous and we wrote some code live and that code ended up like producing a stack trace and we're a bit confused at the, at the moment. Now, it's Monday and, of course, you know, five minutes after the recording ended, we found a bug. <laughs> and it was a, actually a bug that we introduced, uh, not the previous uh episode but the one previous to that i think and so that's all good but we want to come clean and so right now we're gonna append a thing and let you know and let uh, uh, let you take a look at how to make it work great so last episode we wrote this linear grad transform and it looked all good and we like spent all of the brains we had to figure out <laughs> the shape that needed to go in there Yet, when we tried to run it, we got the, an exception with a very mighty stack trace. And it was about the shapes being wrong when we had a gradient, which we thought would be good for the input. It actually had a funny shape because this is the batch size. And we ended up with something that had the output feature size instead. And so what we did is, of course, we're I'm a simple person. The first thing I'll try to do is put in debug prints. And they were inconclusive, though. Um, but actually, after we finished the recording, I went back and added more debug prints. And in particular, I added debug prints here in the my Relo meta. And then 
uh, this show that I have the input shape, the weight shape, and then the result shape, which is here, that is all funny. That is the funny shape we're getting. It should be 64 by uh, 4098. And so uh, uh, I knew it's now in this, well, yeah, it's not even three lines. It's like one line to stare <laughs> down. And uh, sure enough, I copied this line from up here from the mud mole and I changed the indices, but I didn't change the uh, uh, variables and uh, I had the different variables. So when we fix this and maybe take out the, uh, the debug prints because we're all optimistic and because I tried <laughs> it, <laughs> obviously, uh, I probably can be fooled into doing something non-rehearsed next time, but uh, <laughs> uh, I have tried this one. Okay, and then we can uh, uh, also remove the debug prints here. And then we're all good. Uh, and it works. And so yeah, yeah. Has the solution to the riddle, it's not some subtle bug somewhere. But it's just, yeah, you took the global variable. Unfortunately, A and B were also global variables that were defined somewhere. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is how it went. Sorry. Yeah, for that. sure. Next time, we'll have a we'll have working live code during the session again. No, but it, it shows us, you know, how do we go about actually understanding where a bug like this is? I think it got a lot more tricky because A and B were. In, scope somewhere and so we just inherited that and that, that would be um like tricky uh but in in fact just you know isolate print and then identify the 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 trick and also i think um have a mental model on how these things flow it helps a lot because otherwise you see 8000 and you give up and instead you know you should think about like how shapes flow and so on anyway right. That was the key of it. And so that concludes our extended episode on how to uh, have operate operators uh, and then their backward and how to register the backward. Um, and now we can finally use fusions and, and their backwards uh, to do a full end-to-end -end, uh, training step. And that will be something that we focus on in the and next few episodes. Of course, if you have the notebook and I will put it on the Thunder repository as a tutorial, then you see that uh, you have the uh, the uh, forward trace with, where do we have the forward trace? So we have the, let's, let's have both of them. So we have the forward trace here and last traces, and it shows our fused linear relo, mm -hmm. and the backward trace is like the same as it was before, because that's what we wrote. So all good, <laughs> and see you next time. See you. Bye bye.